Station Commander Steve Swanson has something special on his plan for this upcoming weekend. He's part of a six-person team that will compete in the uh, Wild West Relay Race this Friday and Saturday, covering the 200 miles from Fort Collins, Colorado, to Steamboat Springs, which is his hometown, to find out how a person overcomes a difference of 260 miles in elevation to run a relay race. I am joined by another member of that relay team, astronaut Sonny Williams, who once ran the Boston Marathon while serving on board the International Space Station. Hi, Sonny. Welcome, and thank you for joining us today. Thanks, Amiko. It's good to be here. It's great to have you. So um, you are a uh, two-time resident of the space station. Expedition 1415, and that is actually the one that you, back in 2007, that you ran the Boston Marathon, correct? That's correct, yeah. Yeah, and then also, again, more recently, the Expedition 3233 mission. So we're very pleased to have you here today. Uh, it's great to be here, like I said, and supporting our guys on orbit. Great. So first of all, explain to me a little about what this race is. Yeah, um, we did actually the t pretty much the same team that's going to run it this year, ran it about five years ago. Um, and what we did, we got together in Fort Collins the day before, got our plan set together, and uh, the race goes for about 200 miles, like you said, from Fort Collins to Steamboat, up and over a pass. So it's a pretty um, rigorous run, and not everybody runs their whole leg at once. What we do is we have six people running six different times, um, and so we do a relay race one after another. So you end up running six legs that makes it about 30 miles for each person. So that way everybody gets a little bit in the daytime in the morning, everyone gets a little evening, everyone gets a little um, in the middle of the night, and then uh, and that is all pretty much uphill to get over the pass. And then the next day, um, as the night continues, you're pretty much are going down the pass, uh, down from the hill to steamboats. So everybody gets about six legs in to, uh, like I said, add up to about 30 miles. That sounds great. So 30 miles miles, at least um, it's not going to be here in Texas heat. <laughs> Thank God, yes. I was uh, practicing while I've been back here in the United States for the last couple of weeks, and it's pretty hot here. Um, I got my uh, eyes in the sky over there in Colorado. They said the weather's a little bit cooler and a little bit nicer, but well, uh, we do have the hills to contend with. <laughs> well, good. Well, I want to talk about some of that, too. Um, let's first talk about, so has Swanson, he's actually done this before, correct? He's been competed in this race? Yeah, Steve's done it, I think, three times. We did it together once, like I said, I think it was like five years ago, okay. and uh, the team that we had got together is pretty much all back together with the exception of one switch out, um, but uh, everybody's ready to go and to support him up in space uh, with this event. And so who is on the team? So the the captain is a guy named Brett Eggleston. He's a, a longtime friend of Swanee. Um, uh, he uh, lives in Fort Collins, but I think they met each other, knew each other uh, from uh, Steamboat. Uh, Carrie, Steve's sister-in-law, she's a, a really great runner, a lot of fun. Um, Dottie Metcalf Limburger, who's a, a astronaut and just recently left the astronaut um, corps, but uh, she's coming back for the race. Um, also, an another, another guy, our new guy, Tim Flynn, he's joining in, and then myself and, of course, Steve from On Orbit. Okay, sounds great. Well, it sounds like you guys are going to have a good time. So tell me now, because you were talking about the relay and how you're going to go back and forth, how exactly is that going to work? How are you passing the baton to Swanson, who's on the space station, obviously there's going to be some challenge. Yeah, this is going to be a little bit tricky. He's uh, leg number six, so we don't really have to think about it for a little while. I guess we're all good procrastinators. We have five <laughs> legs to get through before we have to worry about it. But uh, in all seriousness, we're um, going to have a guy who's like the relay point of contact, because if you can imagine the race route that I'm telling you about doesn't always have good, calm connections. So we'll have a point of contact that we'll be able to text to keep up to date what how everybody's running and what they're times are. And so then that person can get a relay through mission control up to Steve, so get him ready to go and start the race, uh, his run. And then when he finishes, um, he just needs to make a call down and that uh, reverse communication uh, stretch will go back to our relay team and then the number one guy will start again. So we'll do that six, a number of times. Um, I have one thing to add for the last run, though. Um, not that we're going to not pay attention to Steve's time, because Steve's <laughs> time is our official time. But uh, we uh, have a, a bunch of folks. Of course, he's from Steamboat. So uh, there's been a call out to all his family and friends to come and run the last leg with and for him. Oh, that's They're awesome. all together. Amazing. So we'll have so a bunch the, of people the running. 30 miles? Just oh, the, 30. Last, the last of his leg. Okay, the last uh -huh. part of that mm -hmm. leg. Wow, that's... Amazing. That sounds like a good time thing. Um, so 
very interesting. So you kind of talked about some of the hills. And so I do want to talk about that because you did the Boston, the Boston Marathon. And there were some changes, obviously, terrain. Tell me how it is running on the treadmill and the So station. the treadmill doesn't have the ability to change the terrain. We don't have an inclination like some of the treadmills here on Earth have. Uh, we have the ability to speed it up, and you also have the ability to, to add more resistance on the equipment that you're wearing that's holding you down to the treadmill. So luckily we don't have to go uphill, but uh, on the treadmill, like I said, it does have its um, little problems or pains or, you know, like just like every run that you do, there's some parts that get a little annoying, and this would probably be the, the harness that Steve's going to wear. And depending on how much weight, quote unquote, he chooses to uh, to run with by using the um, like the bungee system, uh -huh. so so he can increase his resistance on himself just to to run, and then he can also increase the speed, which I think will probably be the more uh, accurate way that he can um, make himself work a little bit harder, as though he's going up the hills. The speed is or probably he could better. make it easy and he, reduce that resistance yeah, he could make and just be floating too. and make it look like he's running. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Up the exactly. speed. <laughs> yeah, when uh, my when I when the I ran the Boston Marathon on the treadmill, my sister actually ran it and, um, at the same time on Earth, and I was feeling a little bit bad because that run also does have some hills, and I didn't really have any hills. I didn't have any bad weather up there, um, so. But it, like I said, it has its own pains and problems running on a treadmill, first of all, and secondly, uh, tied to the treadmill, it's not sure, absolutely sure. fun. Well, so I know that you're a. a a big proponent of um, fitness. Can you just explain to me? I know obviously it's very important to all of our bodies here on Earth, but explain why it's so important for uh, you guys when you're flying in space. Yeah, so um, there's a lot of things. That, space is wonderful. It's great. You can fly around. You're like a bird. You know, you're like a fish zooming around in there, but that also has a toll on our physical bodies for a, a number of different things. Radiation, but also um, when it comes to physical fitness, the reason we do physical fitness is for uh, maintaining bone density and muscle mass because, of course, you don't use your legs while you're up in space. You don't have to walk around like you do here, which is an automatic load on your bones and your muscles. And so up in space, the only way to simulate that is getting on the treadmill or for cardiovascular on the bike, or we have the advanced resistive exercise uh, equipment to do s uh, simulated weight lifting. And that's how we are able to come back essentially in normal shape and able to walk around when we get back here. So uh, in space, it's, it's absolutely necessary every day to work out um, because every mo moment that you're in space, you're losing bone density and muscle mass. You can't mm -hmm. stop doing that because you're in microgravity, so your body's not stimulated like it is here on Earth with gravity. So it's really important to do that up in space. And I think one of the reasons like I did the marathon and Swanee is interested in doing this race is because it, it taps into another group of people on Earth for one awareness of people that are in space and what kind of research that we're doing that's going to potentially help us with um, combating osteoporosis because essentially that's what we have in yeah. space and other types of um, problems that humans encounter here on Earth. How can we um, help fix that while we're up there? So that's part of the reason we're doing all these experiments. But also just to highlight physical fitness. It's fun. It's interesting. Um, you can do it uh, you know, a bunch of different ways. You know, Getting out in the morning and running isn't always fun, but when you have a, a real A team that you're doing with, it with, then it makes it a lot more fun, motivating and it's a, it's a team effort. Absolutely. Well, I am very glad that you were able to come out. Um, I, it's great to see you support Swanee as you are, and uh, best, best of luck to you and the team. Thank you very much. We're, we're looking forward to it. Really excited. Ready? Ready. 26 by 2!